So, as you know, this term, you guys are going to get very, very little input about the technicalities, whether it's of enterprise systems or security and assurance uh, type of stuff that's in the module outcomes. And the reason is because, as I said last week, it's a capstone module. It means you're bringing together everything that you've ever learnt. It's your opportunity to choose a subject, a topic, that, you, that plays to your strengths, <coughs> plays to your interests, because everybody in here has different interests that you've developed over the last three years about whether it's the computer forensic investigations and security and all those other things in the key questions for the ISA um, assignment or the sort of enterprise systems ones that um, some of the IT students are doing. So it's your opportunity, even more so than your dissertation subject in a way, to look at some topic that's really caught your interest over those last th these last three years and really do a fantastic piece of research and then come up with a fabulous article at the end of the semester. But to do that, we need to think a little bit about communication. And this really aims at presentations and posters. So we're looking at what's going to come up uh, for your assessment on the infographic poster in four weeks' time or thereabouts. It uses some thoughts from a book by Lowe's, Peters and Turner. Uh, you'll see that at the back end of the bibliography. It was there, I think, um, last week as well. So, we need to think about why are we communicating? Why are we writing dissertations? Why are we writing articles? Why are we creating presentations and posters? And typically, there are just two reasons why we want to communicate. Even when you guys are gassing and chattering all the time. You're doing one of two things, basically. Either help trying to inform the person listening to you or watching your presentation, give them some new information, or you're trying to persuade them about something. And what I'm doing today, here, to in the labs later on is kind of cover both of those things to give you to inform you about some ideas that you probably ought to be thinking about and also try and persuade you to actually put them into practice so that you end up with really powerful persuasive presentations in your infographic poster and in that article that you're going to write and it all comes down ultimately Last term, in the, the introductory lectures that Dave Voorhees gave you about your dissertation, assuming you went to them, he showed one slide, which was the drunken spider's hawk. Remember that one? That's all to do with our, a typical way that many of us start off thinking about doing things. We do a bit, write, read a bit, we research a bit, and we write a bit. And then we do a little bit more research and maybe go off in that direction and write a bit more. And then we go off and, you know, impossible even for us to read our own uh, piece of writing to work out quite how it got to where it ends up at randomly. Whereas then there was also that straight line, wasn't there, from the beginning to the end. Do you remember that one? Yeah. That's to do with the planning. And to do so that, whether it's your dissertation, whether it's for an article, whether it's for a session like this, I had to think about... Those four topic areas. And one of the problem is, these ones here, the what do I want, there's everything. I want to load it up with everything I could possibly say. But I haven't got enough time. You haven't got enough space in your infographic poster. You haven't got enough space in your article, you haven't got enough space, probably, in your dissertation to cover everything that you want to convey to inform me, or your supervisor is going to mark it, or whoever's going to read it, because you've run out of word count. So you have to filter it down to the, not what I want. That's kind of the random, the totality of that drunken spider's walk, down to the linear, what I actually need to say in 
get from the beginning, the problem definition or the introduction, down to that powerful conclusion that fits at the end, with the steps in the middle. Then there's a why question. We're looking at four of the key questions about that help us to understand the world. Why do I want to say it? But why do I need to say it? And there may be a difference between the two, and that's going to colour how you actually put your, or construct it, and then the type of words that you actually use. And of course, who is the audience? And we'll come across, we'll look at some individual slides about each of these in a minute. <coughs> and then, of course, the final constraint, amount of time, or the word count, or the page count, or whatever. Now, this is constrained just how much you're going to actually produce. So these four filters will help you to really hone in on exactly how you're going to construct the logic, the shape, the tone of the words that you're going to be using that fit in into that time scale. So, those are the sort of kind of things that are at the back of our mind while we start thinking about the topic. And you've all done your dissertation, objective, aim and objectives, haven't you? And you kind of had to think about, first of all, well, what topic? What am I going to do? And some of the IT students who are working on, with, on my projects are thinking about the topic is the what? The location service or maybe the effectiveness in some fashion of solar PV generation. Um, and you guys have got all of your own individual topic areas, which you kind of thought about partly from the first idea. And then as you refine through your research, you kind of narrowed down. And that's what you're going to be doing a lot of over the next week or two uh, as you research and think about the topic for the assignment for this particular module, these two modules. But there's a difference between the topic, the what, and the aim. And in a sense, the aim is the answer to what do I want to achieve. If I do this article or this dissertation project and I'm successful in it, what do I want to happen as a result of having done all of this work, produced this lovely article, and yes, it's got a 70, 75, 80% score, or whatever it comes out with. Was your aim just to get 80%? Or is the, your aim slightly better than that, slightly broader? I want the reader to do something to change the way they think, to change the way that they believe. I mean, if you think about your dissertation project, what is the real purpose? What is your real aim in doing your dissertation? Other than getting a good grade so you get a good overall grade for your, uh, your degree. What else are the sort of aims that you've got as to why you're doing that particular topic? Any ideas, folks? To contribute to the uh, field of study. Yeah, that's the classic, one of the classic aims for doing academic research. <coughs> what else are you trying to do in terms of the aim, what you want to achieve with a successful project? If you look at the wording of the assignment specs for both the modules, you'll see that one of the topic aspects is to identify something that the readers didn't know that they didn't know, but which is important that <coughs> they do something about. And so you're trying to add to knowledge, yes, and you're trying to persuade people 
do something that makes their life safer, makes their life better, perhaps. So if you were looking at security, and you were looking at the sort of types of passwords that people use on their wireless routers at home, you guys know, because I've probably mentioned it, you guys probably know because you've actually done some work on it, or you're doing some work with Christine, was it this term you're doing, uh, cryptography and so on? You will know that any password for, that you put in for your, uh, to protect your Wi-Fi wi connectivity that's less than 32 characters long can be rainbow cracked in about five minutes for about 50 pence. If you've actually been sampling the uh, communications with the, with the, with from your laptop using sniffer sort of protocol and looking at hidden SSIDs and so on, or whatever, all Wi-Fi's that you can see out as you drive down a road. So you might want to do a piece of research or write an article to persuade people that they've got to have 32 character or better passwords for their Wi-Fi. Otherwise it's inherently insecure. You know about rainbow tables, I guess, most of you now. Yeah. So, difference between what, so the what in this case would be how secure are typical passwords on Wi-Fi. And the aim would be to persuade people to switch from their standard 8, 10, 12 character site because it's nice and simple to remember to something seriously complicated which is 32, 33 characters long. And I've even seen one university uh, where their Wi-Fi connection for students was close to that length and it was composed of a couple of phone numbers and a few other words fitted in. So, just an example that's kind of related to, or a couple of examples that's kind of related to the sort of things we all know about. If you were given, a, asked to do a presentation on a particular software package that you like, and you guys might choose NCASE, or perhaps you mightn't, I'm not quite sure, which is your favourite package of sort of technical software. But here, the aim very much is description, and information informing people. But if I change the topic to something like how much, or do I trust the internet, or how much do I trust the internet, and dive off and do a whole lot of research, find lots of interesting sources, lots of interesting data, then you might well be coming much more into this field. What's the quality of the data? Now that we've got social media, now that we've got lots and lots of web rating type of websites, do we actually trust those ratings at hotels or cafes and restaurants? And the answer is, guys, no. why not? You do hear a lot about the fake reviews and that kind of thing. Have you found any fake reviews? Yes. You yeah. found fake reviews? Found yes. Yeah. Right. And then we go back again, if you're looking at that topic, the fact that People who fill in, particularly those who fill in the adverse ones, if they are, are the ones who've had a bad experience. And they will be happy to tell the world. But we've had a, a, our expected experience. Do we bother? Why should we? That's what you expect. And so there's this curious 10 to 3 ratio between adverse criticism and positive criticism. But Describe in form persuasion. The topic pretty much is, is the easier of the two. But you're going to need over the next couple of days, uh, next week or so, and again, today's workshop sessions are very much where you can bounce ideas off me um, in individual discussions or even group discussions if several of you want to work on the same sort of topic area. You've got to narrow down from those two enormous subject areas to a little tiny thing that you can write those six pages in the NNCS template about the topic and really do it well. So you've got some research to do to narrow down from big data analytics driven uh, decision making with those questions of down to something that's really close to your heart, close to your experience that you can use. And 
do that, you create something called the specific purpose statement for your aim. By the end of my talk, by the time that you've looked at and absorbed the information on my infographic poster, uh, by the time you've read my article, then what will your audience do? Are they going to change their behaviour? Or are they just going to say, huh, now that's interesting, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Should I do anything with it? So you will need to think carefully about that, because that's going to change the focus. It's going to change the tone of your writing. So, let's have a little bit of time on this one. I'll switch the, the camera off so that you don't get captured and uh, all your private discussions disclosed. But what I want you to do at each table, um, and maybe you two want to split, maybe you want to go in there and maybe there, so you're just not debating between the two. Spend some time thinking about a different topic than the assignment. Thinking about that, then work out as each group, three groups, having started with that topic, what sort of thing do you want your audience, if it's a presentation, say, to actually be thinking, be doing? What will happen when you finish? 